All right, uh, so this uh, continues our fun with our uh, free fall problem. Uh, so our first screencast was free fall and vacuum. Then we updated it to add uh, air resistance. And now we're going to update it again here uh, in example 11.2 um, to account for the deployment of a parachute. And so what we found is when we were, um, so if our object was 75 kilograms, so if we were pretending that this was this free fall problem was of a skydiver. Um, so with air resistance, um, when we hit the ground, um, we were traveling at about 60 meters per second, uh, which is about 130 miles per hour. Uh, so certainly uh, you probably wouldn't survive <laughs> the impact. And so here we want to try and uh, add to our model uh, the addition of a parachute. And so uh, what we're told is that after 30 seconds of free fall, the skydiver deploys a parachute and so the effect of the parachute is to increase the drag constant from 0.2 uh, to 2.7 and so what we want to look at then is now you know with deploying the parachute at 30 seconds uh, how long does it take to hit the ground uh, and then um, also uh, what's the new terminal velocity upon impact so I'm going to go back to MATLAB and you know I still have everything uh, open here. Um, so our function uh, for free fall with uh, air resistance. And then we had our graphs where this was free fall and vacuum. Uh, vacuum. And then the red line is with air resistance. This is position and this is uh, velocity. So I suppose we should update or make these uh, codes a little better to add labels and such. But uh, for now, uh, we'll just leave them as such. All right, so let me save a copy of this. And we'll change air to parachute. Okay. Okay, we'll save that. And let's make it full screen so we can look at it. Okay, cool. So again, when I add the parachute, as far as I'm concerned, this top function doesn't need to change, and my air function doesn't need to change. What the parachutal effect is my rate function. Okay. And so what I'm going to do at this point is something they do in the text. Um, and again, the code here is going to differ because this is just me um, having fun working through the exercise. Is I'm going to create a function to compute the acceleration. So, um, and so rather than have all of these constants here, okay, okay, I want to paste it all down here. Okay, I'll copy and paste this for now down here just so we have it. Okay, because it's gonna get, our code's gonna get rather clunky uh, once you start to add in parachutes and things of that nature. And so what I want to be able to do is dvdt is just going to be equal to acceleration. So let's just call acceleration. Okay. And then what's acceleration going to need? Uh, in theory, it could be a function of t, uh, z, and v. Uh, but in reality, in this case, uh, it's only going to be dependent on, well, t and v uh, here. But let's just make it t, z, and v. Let's just give it every variable, and we can go from there. Okay. So all I'm trying to do is make my rate function uh, or make sure I'm not adding too much that it becomes unclear uh, what it has going on. Okay, so essentially all we're update, doing is updating our rate function. Um, and so now I have this acceleration file uh, where I have my constants. Okay, okay and so, oh, I'm gonna have to do that. So what I'm trying to return it to the uh, net acceleration, the sum. Uh, which in the case would be uh, that. Okay. And so what I'm going to want to do then is so here I have a drag constant of 0.2. So we're told is after 30 seconds uh, our parachute's deployed. Um, well, I guess I just need a simple if statement then. So if t is greater than 30, then c is equal to uh, 2. Point, uh, num locks off, c is equal to 2.7. And then my rate will be computed as such. All right, so 
Um, all I've done is move all the constants to this new acceleration file. So then my rate function dv dt is equal to acceleration, uh, and I pass to it tz and v, everything acceleration could be dependent on. So here in acceleration, I list all those constants, and now I have a logical check. And so the effective parachute is when your time is greater than 30 seconds, you deploy your parachute, which increases your rate constant. Uh, cool. And so then my acceleration is computed exactly the same uh, as before. So MATLAB is highlighting Z. Uh, it's not you, so you know consider deleting it. So we could leave it. Doesn't harm anything. Um, or you could remove it. Doesn't harm anything. All right. Where Z might come in is uh, maybe the problem was instead uh, after you've traveled some distance deploy the parachute, but you know, those just become uh, exercises at that point. Okay, so I'm gonna save it. Okay, and we'll change these to say green and see if we can get them to show up on this plot. But I think with the parachute, we're gonna need to do, need to rerun it and plot them separately. Okay, so uh, just to look at the code again, everything up top stayed the same. All we had to do is update our rate function. Where essentially now we're just checking to see if our time is greater than 30 seconds, because if it is, our rate constant's increasing from 0.2 to 2.7. And so what I did, and that same move, is I created a new acceleration uh, function in which I compute the net acceleration, um, only to keep our uh, rate function from having too much extra uh, material in it to try and uh, make it as clear as possible of what everything corresponds to. So I'm going to restore that back, and I'm going to run it, okay? So I'll run it just like before. Parachute. I'll put some P's here. Okay. Oh, so same as before, uh, interval endpoints, much different sign. Um, so here is with air resistance, we hit the ground at about 70 seconds. Uh, so chances are with the parachute, it's gonna take a substantially longer uh, time. Uh, so I don't know, let's try and make it 900. <laughs> so 900 works. Hey, and there's my trajectory with the parachute. And then there's the velocity. Okay, and so we'll plot it separately so we can look at this separately. Um, or, you know, even here is fine. So what happens is after 30 seconds, I deploy my parachute. So my initial trajectory looks exactly, or it's identical to the case with air resistance. Then at 30 seconds, I pull the parachute, at which point my drag constant increases. All right, and so that's where you get this departure here. All right, it takes much longer to hit the ground. When we now hit it way out here, it's around 175 seconds. Um, we could pull it in the command window in a second. Then the velocity is really cool. So. The velocity profile looks like it's identical to the um, case with air resistance. It reaches your terminal velocity, so you can have some fun for you know about 10 seconds while you're skydiving, and I'm sure 10 seconds seems like eternity. Then you pull the parachute, and you get this step change in your velocity, right? So you pull the parachute, and I'm sure you get some big jerk in which you drastically slow down, and then uh, very quickly reach a new uh, lower terminal velocity as you descend down. Uh, to earth. All right, cool. So if I look at the final time, okay, so uh, before, let's see, so that was, uh, we had vectors appended with A. It took 70 seconds to hit the ground, now it's 176 seconds. More importantly, we were at, so with air resistance, Uh, our velocity when we hit the ground is negative 61 uh, meters per second. Now with our parachute, right, it's negative 16.5 meters per second. Right, so it's you know almost about a third of uh, where we were uh, before. Right, cool. All right, and so and if I wanted to, if I were to close these and then just rerun, all right, I can get those on their own graph. If I were to look at them more closely. Okay. Cool. All right. Uh, and if I were to convert this to miles per second, so VP end, 
and conversion factor is one meter per second is 2.23694 uh, miles per hour. So if I divide that by 2.23694, right, uh, this is showing 7.4 uh, um, miles per hour. Uh, no, I need to um, multiply, not divide. So that's right. Uh, it's about negative 37 uh, miles uh, per hour. Right? Um, would you survive that? I don't know. <laughs> I have no experience, but it's a lot less than um, you know. If we put in with air resistance, we're at about uh, 136 miles per hour, and in vacuum, we're at about 626 miles per hour. All right. So air resistance makes a huge difference. Parachute makes an even bigger distance. If I wanted to slow down even more, what could I do? Get a bigger parachute.